I'm at the house of one of the coolest people you've probably never heard about. He was a spy, a soldier, a businessman, and he was wealthy and famous and mysterious. And then he disappeared, and he was never found. His name was Jim Thompson, and his disappearance is to this day one of the biggest mysteries in Southeast Asia. And this is his story. Jim Thompson was born into a very wealthy family in Delaware, went to Princeton and became an architect in New York, designing homes of some of the richest people in the city at the time and living a glamorous and very privileged life. But by the end of the 1930s, the world was changing for the worse, and Jim felt calling of responsibility and adventure. He left his old life behind and joined the army, where he was soon recruited by the Office for Strategic Services, the predecessor of what then became the CIA. Once the United States joined the Second World War, he was sent to North Africa to work against the Nazis along with the French resistance and then to Southeast Asia to spy against the Imperial Japan. And eventually he was sent to Thailand and he came to Bangkok. And he immediately fell in love with the place. In a letter to his friend, he said this, I am afraid that I like backward places that need to be developed far better than all the high-powered superhighways, motels, and great cities back home. There is so much to see and learn here. Which is funny because Bangkok is now one of the most developed places on the planet. But let's get to the mystery. And then the war was over. Thompson left the OSS and decided to stay in Bangkok and focus on business. He went into the silk industry that had a long tradition in Thailand, but then kind of died out. But Thompson figured that because of his connections, he could revive it and make high quality silk for cheap and then sell it to all the rich people he knew back in America. Which is exactly what he did, and eventually he became enormously successful and really wealthy. And he also became kind of a celebrity that everyone in Bangkok and in most of Asia knew about. He was this rich, eccentric former spy who would carry a parrot on his shoulder when he went to parties and who lived in the most beautiful house in Bangkok but who, according to his friends, was also really lonely and kind of sad. He never had children, and his personal life was a disaster. And then one day, he disappeared. It happened on the 26th of March, 1967. Thompson was visiting his friends in the Cameroon Highlands in Malaysia. Connie Mangska, one of his closest friends for more than 20 years who was visiting with him, later said that Thompson was acting weird most of the time on their trip. She didn't know what was wrong, but she could tell that something was not right and that Thompson was not his usual self on the trip. On the day of his disappearance, Thompson was rude and agitated, which was, according to his friends, out of character for him. In the morning, they all went to attend the Easter service at the village church and then to a picnic, but Thompson was reluctant to go, and when they convinced him to join them in the end, he seemed restless and eager to return back to their cottage. When they came back, they all retired to their rooms, except for Thompson, who left the house soon after, without telling anyone where he would go. At that point, no one was worried because he would often go on long walks and they all assumed that he would be back for the afternoon tea, but he wasn't. In the evening, they started looking for him, but no one in the area saw him. He wasn't at the golf club, he wasn't on the hiking trails, and he didn't come back at all that night. In fact, that afternoon was the last time that anyone ever saw him. The next day he was declared missing and the official search begun, and it soon turned into the largest manhunt in the history of Southeast Asia. 300 Malaysian policemen and soldiers were sent to look for him, joined by pretty much all the British and American tourists in the resort, 30 aboriginal trackers, CIA helicopters that were dispatched into the area, and a number of professional jungle trackers who were attracted by the $25,000 bounty that was declared. The official search lasted 11 days, the unofficial one continued for months, and the entire area was searched from top to bottom. But neither Jim Thompson or his body were ever found. 
There have been a number of wild theories as to what might have happened to him, but there are three main ones. Theory 1, the most basic one, he just got lost, fell into a hole somewhere and died. Could that happen? Well, yes, because there is a plenty of wilderness in the Cameron Highlands in Malaysia, and there are jungles where he could get lost and injured, so it is a possibility. But the area where he was staying is more like an English countryside, a residential area with private golf clubs and hiking trails. And Thompson would have to leave the trail on purpose and head straight into the jungle. And it's not clear why would he do that. While it's not impossible, it's also quite strange that Thompson's body would be never found if he really got lost. Especially since there were so many people looking for him, including many local hunters who knew the forests like the back of their hands. The second theory is that Thompson left on his own. He was vocally critical of the US engagement in the Vietnam War and in the region in general. And when he disappeared, there were speculations that he defected to the communists in China or Vietnam to help them fight against the Americans. But this theory doesn't really make sense. Thompson still had a booming business in Thailand and it's just unlikely that he would just leave everything all of a sudden. And then there's a third theory, the most sinister one, that he was kidnapped and later killed. Originally this theory was based on the fact that Thompson was a chain smoker who had to constantly take painkillers due to a liver condition. But he left both his cigarettes and his pills in his room, something that was very uncharacteristic of him and which would suggest that perhaps he was forced to leave. But there were no signs of struggle, no one heard anything and there was never any ransom note. If he was kidnapped, it would have to be by someone who did not care about money and there was never any clear theory as to who that might be. But in the past decade, there was sort of a breakthrough thanks to a documentary about the disappearance called Who Killed Jim Thompson? While investigating his disappearance, the producers of the documentary were contacted by someone whose uncle shared with them a story about Thompson's disappearance as part of their deathbed confession and they eventually found a second source that confirmed the original story and their conclusion is that Thompson was murdered by Malaysian communists. According to their information, Thompson's decision to go to Malaysia was not random and he was not actually on vacation at all. What he was allegedly really trying to do was request a meeting with the chief of the Malaysian underground communist party, at the time the most wanted man in the country, hunted by the Malaysian government. Why exactly he wanted to get in touch with him is not clear, but he likely attracted the wrong kind of attention to himself. An older American, known to be a former CIA officer, asking to meet with a communist leader in deep hiding just had to be suspicious. And according to the producers of the documentary, instead of getting a meeting, the local communist cell decided that it would be easier to kidnap Thompson and kill him without leaving any evidence. However, whether that's true remains unknown. Although the documentary managed to find two different sources, they are both based on secondhand information from relatives that have been dead for a long time and that cannot be verified. But unless his remains are found in the jungle one day in the future, it is quite likely that the old spy might have died on his last mission.